Hey guys, welcome back to TCT, and if this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. The crazy, because I just send sometimes. Troll, because I consider myself a troll with no face paint on, and when I do put on face paint, a cute troll, but still a troll nonetheless. So that is what TCTN means, the crazy troll nation. So become a troll. Be a part of the nation. Own who you are. <laughs> first things first, y'all know what time it is. Chapstick. it. Sister's lips be dry, more so. I can't even say more so in the summer. Because all year round, sister's lips be dry. I realized something today. I know I've mentioned in a few previous videos that I had a heat rash on both of my arms from when I was in Cape Charles, Virginia a few weeks ago. And I'm, I was looking at my arms today and my skin is starting to flake. I know you guys can't see it because this is my Android phone and not like one of those high profile cameras that YouTubers use. And so I'm just like, oh my gosh, like my skin on my arms is starting to flake. So I'm going to put on Cody lotion. No, this video is not sponsored by Chapstick or Cody lotion. I just love this lotion. And so what I've been doing is actually since I've had the heat rash and periodically in general, because my skin loves this lotion, is I have been putting it on more frequently than usual because it does really soothe my skin. And why do, why do I sound like I'm trying to sell this stuff? Um, it has olive oil in it. It says Cody New York Olive Hand and Body Lotion. Yeah. And so I'm not going to get into the ingredients because this is not a video about the lotion. This is just part of the crazy. Like this is a part of my getting ready process and it doesn't feel oily. My skin absorbs it really well. This is great for <laughs> if your feet are jacked up or they're just really dry after your shower and after you dry off after a shower, put this on your feet and then put on either a regular pair of socks or preferably aloe socks and sleep with them on. And by the next morning, your feet should be softer. If not, it may take a few days, depending on how jacked up your feet are. I shouldn't say it like that because it sounds like it's a bad thing. But depending on how dry your feet are, at least after three days of using that technique, your feet will be soft. So we have on the chapstick. <laughs> we have on the lotion for my flaking skin from this heat rash. And so <laughs> going to use my glass dish. I didn't pull out anything, so I'm hoping I don't forget anything. So I'm going to pull out a few things right now in the hopes that I don't forget anything but knowing me I probably still will but we'll see because sometimes I, I pull stuff out and then I still forget to use it I'm just like okay that didn't work out too well so yeah everything else I'm gonna just leave where it is so the milk hydro grip primer one pump on this glass dish All of a sudden, I just got really hot. The Sephora Pro Diffuser number 64 brush. To apply the primer, as I said the other day, which it'll probably be up uploaded like a week ago from today. I do not like <laughs> anything on my hands. <laughs> like anything that's slimy or sticky or... And it's been getting worse over the years because I've even like I think five years ago I've been saying I'm a budding germaphobe and that's when I started taking hand sanitizer with me when I would go out to restaurants and after I would deal with the menu I would put that aside use my hand sanitizer and I'm messy anyway in general because I'm just clumsy so I would always ask for extra napkins and people would laugh at me like you always bring your hand sanitizer and I'm like I'm a budding germaphobe and like I didn't like ever you know touching <laughs> You know, door handles, doorknobs, light switches, except if I'm home. But if I'm out, and even if I'm at someone's house, <laughs> like I'm looking at the, the light switch before I touch it, like, is this clean? <laughs> or like the refrigerator handle and things like that. And now when I think about it, I was like that in my childhood. Well, my adolescent years, because I remember back in the day, I'm 50. So back in the day when there were pay phones... <laughs> If you're 20 something and watching this, you're like, what's a pay phone? <laughs> but yes, I was born in December 1969. So when there were pay phones, I would actually, like if I had on um, a sweater or a jacket, I would take my sleeve and wipe it over the handle and then pick it up. And then I would 
pull up the underside of my shirt, like if this is the phone, and I would wipe off the earpiece and wipe off the mouthpiece before I put the phone like to my face. So even as a teenager, I was that way. And so I'm thinking this is something new for me over the last five years or so, but it's not. I've always been this way. Like I don't like touching things where I don't know, you know, who else has touched this or what has this been in contact with? And so when COVID happened, well, when it was known that it was a pandemic, and they're like, oh, take hand sanitizer, this and that. I'm like, dude, I've been doing that for like 10 years. <laughs> so it wasn't anything out of the norm for me. And it turned into like when I go places and I would take my hand sanitizer, people, people now are like, oh, can I use some of that? Can I use some of that? And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all slow on the uptake because I've been doing this for a long time. So I'm going to take <laughs> the Sephora Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. And I read this every time as if I don't know what it is. I've been using this concealer at least for like five years. And I still read it like I don't know what the name of it is. I did change. I did move my stuff around a little bit um, on my table. And so I'm, I'm, I want to see how this looks. Because I want it to look like I'm looking at you. And it's a mirror here. So I'm going to try and do this. And hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to do my makeup using this mirror down here. And not necessarily have to hold up another mirror. Because it creates a shadow over my face blah 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 yada 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 and then I'm going to take the NARS and I'm reading this too like I don't know I've been using this about the same amount of time I've been using this before one the NARS medium dark number two caramel radiant creamy concealer this one I use to cover my redness it's too dark for, for my under eyes but it's a good match for spot treatment on my face so I'm going to show you Look at that. It just disappeared. Awesome, right? Uh, sometimes I bother with this and sometimes I don't because the foundation will cover up some of it. And I do like, look at that. So this is perfect for spot treatments. Every now and then I try it under my eyes and, and it just looks too dark. It makes my under eye discoloration look a little darker. I don't mind having dark spots on my face and I do have freckles because I, I feel like it gives my face character and when someone says to me this is the Sephora Pro Contour Highlight number 80 brush when someone says to me oh your makeup looks nice I always say what do you mean by that because I don't want it to look like I have foundation on and if my face looks like a blank slate that means it's too much coverage or I put too much on or it's not the right shade for that time of year or I needed to add on bronzer or you know whatever and so I don't mind my imperfections showing through because people who know me know what I look like and I don't always wear makeup and so if I'm out and somebody's like oh your makeup's nice I'm just like uh, what did I do wrong instead of being like oh thank you depending on the person like if someone says, oh, your eyeshadow looks nice, I'm like, thank you, because I know that's the eyeshadow. But when they just overall say makeup, I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Because as you guys know, I am not an Instagram <laughs> model <laughs> or Instagram person. I do my makeup like how I do when I go outside. And so what you see here is what they see outside. When I wear makeup outside which isn't much anymore because of COVID and then you put a mask on and then it's inside the mask and nah, it's just a mess. So the cover effects power play foundation in G60 that I know the name of. <laughs> I am a mess. Welcome to the crazy. I just love this stuff. Um, the Boshia or Basha, however you pronounce it, the Sabaki oil. I'm just going to drop two drops on top of my foundation. This helps it to be less matte. Sorry for the noise. I know I'm clanking. I'm going to use that same brush that I use for the primer. And I always tell myself I'm going to skip doing my nose because I don't have my contacts in today because I'm going to be in the house, which means watching TV or working on my computer, I'm going to have my glasses on. And so I always end up with a divot, which you can probably see already on each side of my nose for my glasses. And so even though I say I'm not going to put foundation on my nose, 
it ends up there anyway because I do want my face to be cohesive so yeah I can tell myself that but I'm not always honest with myself <laughs> don't put foundation on my nose and then I put foundation on my nose I was feeling sleepy earlier I woke up well rested and then I had a carb heavy breakfast it was a bagel with um Philadelphia cream cheese the spicy jalapeno oh my gosh it is so good and then after I ate that I got sleepy but what do you expect you just ate a whole bagel and so right before this video I drank about three ounces of Mountain Dew so I think it's kicking in <laughs> so I'm just like bada, 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 which means I'm not going to be able to edit much because I keep blabbing so this I like and unfortunately unfortunately I feel like I'm starting to sweat already to try to alleviate some of the breakdown or how sweat affects my foundation I did how does yeah I said that right <laughs> I dampened um, <laughs> A real technique sponge and I'm just going to press in especially around my nose area and my chin area because this area here like when I look close up in the mirror I can see my pores I don't have necessarily large pores but it's something with just the way the foundation settles in and so I'm going to see if this will help it to not look as settled in as it usually does and so I am just pressing it in there's nothing on this and it's not picking up the foundation which is great and so hopefully that will help that to stay better even though it stays but you know what I mean so it doesn't look funky so I'm going to take <laughs> oh I was going to take the powder but no the Bordeaux Brat Fenty matchstick I'm, I'm hoping it looks like I'm looking at you so I turn the camera a certain way hoping that it'll help it look like I'm looking at you so this is what I use as a blush the Bordeaux Brat and you guys have seen me use this before I was thinking about yesterday when I did a video which <laughs> will seem like a week ago by the time this video is uploaded I was saying how my makeup is never symmetrical on one side to the other side and I, re I remember saying well since my face isn't symmetrical why should my makeup be and then today I'm thinking maybe my makeup doesn't look symmetrical because my face is not symmetrical so maybe it's not necessarily <laughs> my technique is just that my face is not symmet symmetrical and I do find sometimes that I have to do different things a different way on opposite sides of my face to try to get it to look the same like this eye droops down this one is more up and so I have to do a different technique with blending eyeshadow on this side than on this side things like that and how my lips this side comes down and so and I do just line inside of my lip line and when I do that I do notice that my lips look more uneven than usual and I, and I know it's because I, I'm putting color on my lips but I really don't want to start trying to like overline in one area or underline on another area so that it looks even because this is how my lips naturally look <laughs> and the same with my hairline when I get haircuts I'm like do not even out my hairline because then when it starts to grow back it just looks really weird like I have a little divot right here it's not quite a widow's peak here but there's a divot here and then it comes back down you know what I mean and then I have a gray patch over here that looks like I'm going bald but this is a family of grays <laughs> and so I tell them do not even out my hairline because then when it grows in it's gonna look funny so it's like there's nothing about each half of my face that's the same except I have eyes on each side and the nostril on each side but other than that <laughs> even my grin is crooked you know so it's like you know what this is me this is a troll and I embrace it. I accept it. This is who I am. I love myself. Learning to love myself more every day. The Lancome Long Time No Shine Powder. 
And so for me, even saying, you know, Troll Nation, I know I'm not like an actual troll, like is there even such a thing as a real troll, but it's just me accepting <laughs> my flaws, well not even flaws, but my, my, what's the word I'm looking for? The things that make me unique. That's my way of accepting the things that make me unique that someone else may have a problem with if it was on their face. And so me saying a troll is just accepting myself for who I am regardless of what society may say. Like someone may say, oh, well, you can get an eye lift or you can get fillers for your under eye bags or something like that. And for me, I'm like, this is who I am. Like, would I like to not have under eye bags or at least have them the same? Because this side, I have a double bag. <laughs> So I would like them to at least be the same. <laughs> but do I want it to be the same bad enough to actually do something about it? No, because this is who I am. So this is just me embracing myself. And so I, I welcome and encourage all of you to do the same. And I know it can be challenging when we're watching, you know, different videos and society says you should look this way. And I also know it does play a, a huge part in where you are. This is the Fenty... Um, setting powder and uh, honey and I do I have come to realize from watching YouTube that depending on where you live it may play a bigger part in how you view yourself like if you're in New York or if you're in you know um, Los Angeles or somewhere like that where it is such a huge thing based on looks that you may start to feel like I need to fix this or I need to fix that and for me I'm just like you know be who you are and even when I look at movies, I am really Gabby in this video. <laughs> that Mountain Dew kicked in quick. So even looking at movies, like you see people in their natural state. You see them in some movies without makeup on. Um, Viola Davis, I loved how in some of her movies, you know, she actually takes off her makeup after like a day at work. This is nutmeg very lightly just to even out the foundation because it is too light for me right now because I am still fully tanned. And so I loved how, you know, she took her makeup off in the video. I mean, not the video, in the movie. Um, I was watching something on YouTube. Nick Cannon was talking about, you know, he, he was saying that he doesn't wear makeup in his movies. And they're like, oh, well, you know, you, this or that or your under eye bags or whatever. And he's like, I got bags. He was like, this is who I am. Don't put any makeup on me. And I appreciate that. I mean, just own however you look and learn to love your flaws or things that you used to not love about yourself you are the only person that can perfectly be you so just own it own it own it be a troll so subscribe click the notification bell and i shouldn't be doing this under my eyes because that nutmeg is going to make it look dark under my eyes so i'm going to take again did that make that dark under my eyes so okay I was gonna put more of the translucent powder on but we're not so now we're going to take do I want to do my brows first this is the brow uh the Fenty brow pencil <laughs> what is it called brow MVP and this one is in soft black I had the black brown but it was kind of red and I'm like why is this red but anyway so this is soft black, which I do like for the color of my brows. I do think it is the color of my brows. I go heavier over here where I do the tail. And then I go lighter inside in this area right here. I don't do anything fancy with my brows because, again, my brows are not naturally fancy. And I want to look natural. Also, I'm 50. So this is a good video, I think, for a good base face video for someone with mature skin or just mature age-wise in general. And I did do a video a while ago on ba easy base face for a mature person. Are they, are they even? Nope. <laughs> Am I surprised? Nope. But we're going to leave it like that because my face is not even. We just went through that whole thing. Oh, and I just messed up. Mm. 
I don't want to really take that high. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that. Because I don't want to take it up that high. And so I was watching a video. I'm not going to say any names. She does makeup really well. And like how I always say my eyeshadow is never even. She did a tutorial. And one crease color was here. And the other eye, the crease color came all the way up to here. And I was like, okay. <laughs> And I don't know if she noticed it or not, because when people do videos, like how I just messed up my brow, some people say, oh, I just messed this up, or I need to fix this. Like, she didn't mention it at all, and so I don't even know, like, if she noticed it. I told you I moved stuff around, and I can't find it. Okay, this I went up too high, so I'm just going to take some of that brow color off of there. And so, but I, I don't envy people whose brows look the same. I mean, not brows, their eyeshadow. And I know they're professional makeup artists. This is what they do. And if you're doing looks for clients for, you know, magazines or different types of shoots, you know, it does need to be on point. And so I'm not mad about that. But for me as an everyday person, this is what you won't get. Because <laughs> I am just an everyday person. I'm not a professional, as you probably noticed by now, and even if, this, even if this is your first time here, you've noticed that. So we're going to take the Fenty Eyeshadow Primer. This video is going to be long because I'm talking, so I'm not going to be able to edit a lot. But that's okay. I normally don't do long videos. And so thank you for bearing with me if you're still here. And I just got real quiet. I'm going to do another video right after I do my face, depending on if I like the look. Because when I feel cute, I'm like, I'm going to do another video. And sometimes I don't do any makeup at all and do a video if I'm sitting in the other room in front of the... In front of the... <laughs> in front of the window! <laughs> where the natural light hits really well. Or even if it's dark outside, if I put the ring light on, which I did move into my bedroom in front of the window because that tends to hide some of my imperfections and so I do like sitting there to do videos another one of the Sephora Pro Contour Highlight number 80 brush and this is to this is the one I use for concealer this is the one I'm using to run out the primer So yeah, depending on how this looks, I will do a video after this one, a relationship red flag video, which I'm going to be doing a series, and I've been meaning to start it, well I did start it, but I've been meaning to add to that series, but I've just been like, my days have just been, I've been feeling like really weird, like I wake up feeling really good, and then like towards, after a few hours, I'm just like, oh I'm sleepy, let me just see what movies are on or watch TV and I haven't even been working on my memoir like I'm supposed to be well like I tell myself I am we're going to use again the Safari palette from Natasha Denona and we're going to be using the top row again so this is a do-over of the top row and I will link the original video somewhere up here so what we're going to did I, I was gonna say did I bring out my brushes which I did but I need another brush I am starting to sweat. Oh, you know what? I didn't spray uh, setting spray on my face. Do I want to do that or do I want to just keep doing that? This is, I just sweat so easy, guys. It, it just, all right, I'm going to put on some setting spray, which I usually do before. I'm not going to put this on because you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna spray it on my puff because when I put this on I then wipe it off my eyelids and so I didn't want to spray it because I already have eye primer on I'm gonna tell you how tacky this Fenty eye primer is I put it on one day and then I was doing something else I put the primer on then I said oh you know what? let me do my brows my eyelids were sticking and I was like, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh, that darn primer. Because <laughs> I had put the primer on and didn't immediately do my eyeshadow. But my eyelids were sticking together. Like the lift, this part was sticking up. <laughs> so 
So yeah, that is a tacky primer, which is why I like it. But I didn't realize how tacky it was until that happened. And even now, I feel like they're sticking together, <laughs> which is good. So we're going to take a small Real Techniques brush. This one says Insta Pop Crease Brush. But I'm going to use this for, and I wrote down <laughs> the order because the order I'm putting these shadows on are different than the original video that I will put somewhere. So we're going to take Malia, Mal <clears throat> Malia, this first shade, and we're going to use that in the inner corner. And also going to wrap it around. Everything I do on my lid, I'm going to match underneath. And so I'm going to do it as I put them on. Instead of doing just all the, the lid, the upper lid, and then going back to do the lower lash line, I'm going to just do it at the same time. Well, not the same exact time, but while, while I am in that color, I'm going to just place it where I want it to be. Ooh. I don't think that spray helped. Whew. And I'm also going to uh, take a different brush. This is a Fenty Precision 220 brush, that same color, Malia or Malia, and use that as a brow bone highlight. I can talk through everything else, but then when it comes to like my eyeshadow, I get real quiet. All right, next we're going to take, where's my paper? <laughs> we're going to take Rhino. Which one is Rhino? We're going to take this one here with an angled Real Techniques brush. <laughs> this one is Instapop Shade Brush. Where's Rhino? Rhino is this one. So we're going to take that on, and I can just use this mirror. I don't know why I'm like being so, well, it's just because I am. I was going to say retarded, but, you know. You guys who have been here before know me by now. And so we're going to put that there. Oh, this is sticking really nicely. This primer, I love this primer. I've been using it. it has to be well over a year by now. Putting it on the lid and... In directly into the crease because I do have slightly hooded eyes and I like when I look at someone they can still see a hint of that color versus when my eyes are low or closed or I blink or something like that so I'm dipping in and out of Rhino making sure to just take a little at a time because y'all see this color I'm gonna do it on the other eye on my And I do pat and not swipe because this is such a tacky primer. I see people put on eye primer and then they use a crease brush and they just swipe back and forth. That doesn't work for me because I have all this extra skin up here. So no matter how lightly I swipe back and forth, it moves the skin <laughs> on my eye, on my eyelids. And so, yeah, I, I am a patter. And then I'll go back and swipe later for blending purposes. I'm going to wipe that brush off and then go in with, oh, I'm sweating. Fata Morgana, this shade here, and this is going to go on the outer corner of my lid and I said I was going to use one shadow at a time put it underneath and then I just forgot that but I think it's because I'm using the same brush but I'm just like okay let me wipe it off and then put this on I, I believe I did mention this is a do-over of the look that I did in the original video and I think I did it twice in that video because once I did the crease colors first and then the second time I did the crease colors last and I liked it better that way. And so I'm trying it again with that technique. I try and make a mental note to bring my eyeshadow out 
but I still end up just doing a curve because I'm following the shape of my eye. And when I see the finished look, I'm thinking, oh, I need to just start bringing it out, bring it out. But it maybe I'm not making as conscious an effort as I think I am when I do my eyeshadow. So even though I say I'm going to do that, it doesn't end up that way. It helps more so when I use a smaller brush. Like instead of this angled brush, if I were to use this smaller one, this one here, because then it can go more so directly where I want it. Even though it is going where I want it, it's just a rounded shape versus an elongated shape. You guys know what I mean. Yeah. So I'm going to take, actually the brush I used for my brow bone color, I'm going to take that and go into Rhino. And I'm going to put that right here. Next to Malia or Malia. Gonna wipe that off and then go into Fata Morgana. I have so many lines under my eyes that <laughs> this shadow just skipped all across my lower lash line. <laughs> Which is why sometimes I don't use this type of a brush. And the brush I normally use. I've had lines and bags since I was in my 20s. Like when I look back into my older pictures, I'm just like, wow, girl, like much did not change. So since this side is jacked up, I'm just going to wrap it. <laughs> yeah, this side, I don't even know what happened, but I'm going to try to fix it. All of my skin moves, and so it's hard to like fix them. <laughs> I am going to take, uh, I wanted just a regular because this is such a good cover up shade for me, and I did not intend to do this. I'm going to take Tamarin on a Sephora Bullet Crease Brush number 86, and I'm going to just dip it straight in, tap it, and I'm going to attempt to blend that out which is difficult to do because of my wrinkles, it just moves all my wrinkles. No matter how lightly I go, it just moves everything under my eyes, well, skin-wise. And so that's why sometimes you'll see me just doing this instead of going back and forth because it moves my skin. And I, whew, and sweaty. I could never live somewhere where it's just really hot because my face melts i am liking this look and it is not done yet so the next thing we're going to do is whew, wow we're going to take <laughs> what are we taking and with what brush <laughs> we're going to take stone which is this shade here with a sephora crease brush number 19. did i say stone no, 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 no. We're going to take Savannah first. Savannah is this one right here. So we're going to take that and I'm going directly in, which creates a hell of amount of kick up in the pan. And we're just going to go along the edges of Rhino and Fata Morgana to blend that out. When I originally did this look, thank you for being here. This video was like 30 minutes already. I used stone for this part. And on one side, it was up too high and it looked really light and pasty on me. And so I had said when I did it again, I was not going to take stone that far up, which is why I'm using Savannah as the initial crease color or above the crease color to blend out those colors, to blend out the lid colors. I'm hoping I'm making sense. Cause I'll say something and then I'm like, that didn't sound right. And so I'm going to go in small circular motions just to move that color around a little bit. Just a little bit. 
There's a song, just a little bit of love, a little bit. I know I sound like a, a sick frog when I sing. I know that. I'm partially tone deaf. I've been told by someone who sings very well, and I believe it. With all of my other issues, why not also be partially tone deaf? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take stone, same brush, going to wipe it off, and we're going to... <laughs> I own my issues and we're going to put that between the brow bone color and Savannah. So that's very lightly because this color looks kind of pasty on me. So this is just filling in this gap right here. Very lightly because I don't want it to be pastel-ish. This I like. This I like. Because this, this look is so dark, I'm not going to put on any eyeliner. I am going to do my inner rooms just because I just love that look, y'all. I really do. And this is the <laughs> hella old <laughs> Buxom Inside Eyeliner in Sapphire. Actually, I could use this mirror down here. Because once you get it on your waterline, you just go straight across. So I don't really need... To look close in the mirror to do this but i do need to be quiet when i'm doing this i'm trying to find where the water line is and then once i find it i go straight across so it's not that i'm trying to build up color in the corner i'm just trying to make sure i'm on the line I like this look. So we're going to pop on a lip real quick. Sheesh, this video is long. Thank you for being here. I kind of want to put on mascara just to get the eyeshadow out of my eye. Uh, lashes. I'm going to take... Is this expired yet? This expires in October. October 2020. This is the Stunner in Unveil. I want to take off some of that, where's my stuff, some of that uh, chapstick. To give this stunner something to stick to because it is a liquid lip. I have two eyeshadow brushes here I did not use, yay. So I'm shaking this up, mixing it. Ugh. I was going to start talking and then realized I was going to do my lip. What I was going to say is, well, not what I was going to say. Some people now are like, oh, liquid lipsticks are so outdated and so old. Nobody uses those anymore. Shit, yes, I do. I love them because they dry down to like a stain and it stays a long time. And I don't really get that butthole thing that people talk about <laughs> from liquid lips. And even if I feel like I do, when I ask someone, does it look like it's worn the outside and worn off in the middle? They're like, no, it looks fine. And I'm just like, okay. Because sometimes it feels like it's starting to flake. Not, not the stunners, but other liquid lips that I've used. I think the key is putting it on in thin layers. What I was going to say is, I really do want to get the Natasha Denona Metropolis, Metropolis, Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I am still on the fence because I like shimmers, I like metallics, I don't like glitters, I don't like anything that's going to fall out, I don't want to have to wet my brush, I don't want to have to use my fingers. <laughs> The thing with the fallout with some of the glittery shades are that I wear contact lenses when I'm going out. And so if I'm putting on shadow and it's flaking off or like dropping down into my eyes, it is not a good thing because then my eyes are tearing and then I may possibly ruin a pair of contact lenses. This looks like it needs to be blended a little more. I'm going to take that brush that had tamarind on it. And I, I did not put anything extra on this brush. I'm just going to go back and forth in this area because I think it looks a little sharp that edge um and i know that palette is half mattes and half i don't know if it's an even mix 
but the um the metallics and shimmers or glitters or whatever they are and I, I need to probably just look and see what exactly the shades are what the finish is of those shades i don't know what to do with that i'm not liking this side like this it looks fine but when i go like this it looks like it's coming over this way i'm gonna leave it like it is um but i want to i'm leaning more on the side of getting it i'm waiting for the sephora rogue cell or rouge cell however it's pronounced because then i i will get 20 percent off but my concern is that the shimmery shades may be too shimmery or maybe too chunky and because that's about half the palette that i won't really use those shades and so that's my concern however my reasoning for wanting to get it is because i have two four six eight ten eleven inglot pigments that i've had I don't even want to add up the years and so my thought is that the Metropolis palette will replace these pigments because these are super old so this is three of the pigments here's another two here's another two and so even though these are different shades some of them where they appear to be different shades and here's another two my thinking is that the metropolis palette will replace these colors so that's my thinking um i don't know and these are so old i don't know even if they're safe to still use they're at least 10 years old at least 10 years old but them being pigments and because I only use what I pour into the cap, I'm not dipping into the actual shadow. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, they're still good, but who really knows? Cause these pigments are like 10 years old. So they're probably not safe. So anyway, that's why I'm leaning towards getting the Metropolis palette because I do like her matte formulas a lot. I love the Leela palette, even though those have um, shimmers and metallics in it, I do not get a lot of fallout with those. They just go on there smooth. Those are her metallics that I love. And so I'm hoping that the Metropolis palette has those types of metallics and shimmers in there. The chunky glittery stuff, like in the Sunrise palette and the Sunset palette, I hated it. I hated them. I hated them so much so I don't even have those two palettes anymore. I ended up trashing them. But So that's my dilemma, but I do really believe I am going to get it especially with the sale that's hopefully is coming up in august hopefully and then i will be doing a bunch of videos with looks on that the same as i have been doing looks on this for like the past what three weeks now this has been the only eyeshadow palette i've been using because i've been wanting to really get to doing looks that i liked and so i'm glad that i purchased it from her website because her website you cannot return it after you use it and so knowing that I couldn't return it motivated me to keep using it and trying different techniques um, and now I can say as I said in the last video I really do enjoy this palette I don't like the kick up in the pan with certain brushes that I use for the shadows but other than that the last maybe three but definitely the last two videos I did I really really loved the looks that I did and so for me, this is not a miss. If it's still on sale, go ahead and buy it. I don't have a problem with all matte looks. Um, you know what I'm gonna do just for giggles? I'm going to take one of these Inglot pigments. Thank you for being here. This video was hella long, I know. I'm going to take, this is number 71. And I'm going to pop this on my inner corner. I am just curious. Oh my gosh, look at this color. That might be too bright for this. Ooh, we're gonna do it just to see. I'm going to take a small flat um, shader brush, Real Techniques brush. This one is Instapop Crease Brush. And there's already a little bit in the lid. And so this is how I use it. Whatever's in the lid, I'll take the brush and just swipe it. Look at, oh my gosh, look at it. And then I'll tap it. Oh my gosh, I hope this doesn't look crazy. And we're going to just press it. Oh! Yeah, that didn't look good. <laughs> but this this brush, these angled brushes, I'm going to press it in again, tap it off. These angled brushes, there's like no fallout. 
I can't tell you last time I used one of these Inglot. Oh my gosh, that looks kind of crazy. I don't remember when the last time I used these, but then when I use them like now, and I'm reminded of how awesome they are and how much I really enjoy them. I'm going to take that brush I use um, for Tamarind with no additional shadow on it and just blend that over. You know what? I'm kind of... Hey guys, my phone just completely just cut off. I have never done a video this long before. Not at one, not one complete video. I've done videos back to back to back to back and then just chopped it up into segments or topics, but I've never done just one complete whole video that was this long. So if you are still here, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I did use um, the brush that had tamarind on it and I kind of wrapped that inner corner shade underneath a little bit and I did get a little fallout doing that and so I took uh, one of these cute tippy things and I just well let me use a clean one so I don't mess it up again <laughs> and I just cleaned it up like that and so that is the look and that's why I love these Inglot pigments like what the heck what and so yeah so <laughs> I already said my thought process behind the Metropolis palette is to replace my Inglot pigments. But every time I use them, I'm just like, oh my God, I don't even, I'm speechless because it is just so awesome. I love this look. Let me know what you think. If you have this palette, as I said in all the other videos, let me know how you're liking it. If you're liking the looks, if you've done looks with this palette, put the links below. I'll watch them. Subscribe, click the notification bell, comment, yada, 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 yada. And I'm going to go before... <laughs> My camera runs out of time again. <laughs> Thank you guys for enjoying the complete trollness to the cute trollness. And you will see me in the next video. Thank you.